Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a great day. I had to come on here and share a little story about what happened to me last night at my show. So normally I would type my stories, but this is a little more involved and a little more special and hopefully um, can help lots of you like it helped me. Hey Jen! So last night I had a cooking show and I'm gonna be completely honest and transparent with you guys. I have been struggling for cooking shows and I love to do my cooking shows. So I've been doing virtuals and as we know, virtuals, there's no rhyme or reason or for me anyway. So I like to do eight to 10 cooking shows a month and I love to fill in with my virtual parties, but I have been struggling with getting cooking shows on my calendar. It seems like everybody is busy. Everyone's like, oh, I can, it was a great show, but I can't. And I'm old school. I do a demonstration style show. I haven't really ever done. I've tried in the past to do the station style, but I usually do, or I always do, a presentation style show. And my show's quick, like 45 minutes, and I make usually two or three recipes depending upon the theme. And I have been struggling with bookings. And I do not have one, or I did not have one September cooking show on my calendar. And the truth is, I was freaking out. I have a bunch of virtuals booked, but again, I want my cooking shows. So I've been in a really bad way and, and reaching out to people and frustrated when they don't answer and just hasn't been going well for me to get that calendar booked. So I had a show scheduled for last night and she was gonna have like, you know, 17 people. She was a past host from many years ago. And I was telling my upline, Jill Lerner, who's a national executive director, um, how I was really frustrated and I better get some bookings tonight for September because I don't know what I'm gonna do. So Jill, who if you know Jill and I, Jill, mine and Jill's relationship, we've known each other forever. We've been friends for like 45 years. We're in the same third grade class together and we basically have a sister relationship. So she said, I know what you can do. I'm like, what? And Jill has never given me any business advice in the 23 years I've been with Pampered Chef. We joke that she's taught me three things. One is to take the deep covered baker, which when it first came out, I was like, it's not big enough. I'm not going to take it. She's like, don't be an idiot. Take it. And then it became my best selling product. And then when the rock rock came out, she was like, why aren't you taking it? I'm like, I don't know. I like my deep covered baker. She's like, don't be an idiot. Take it. And then the rock rock became my best selling product. So now she's going to give me a little more advice last night. She said, you're going to take one for the team. You're going to make this new um, chicken cacciatore recipe in the quick cooker. I'm like, what, what is that recipe? I've never even heard of it. She's like, I kind of just put it together myself. Cause remember we used to make Penny Parks' chicken cacciatore in the grill pan. Well, I spoke to the test kitchen and I made it a couple of times for my family. It's amazing. It's so simple. Everyone I've given it to on my team has loved it. I said, I never heard of this. She's like, write it down. So she said, you're going to take the blender you're gonna make a quick appetizer in that. You're gonna take the quick cooker and do the chicken cacciatore, and then you're going to do a dessert if you want. Oh, she said, I have to take the rock rock and do the pasta, and I'm gonna put the chicken cacciatore over the pasta. So they're gonna see the blender, they're gonna see the quick cooker, they're going to see the rock rock, and if you wanna do a dessert, that's totally up to you. And I do the turtle fudge skillet cake in the 12 inch skillet, and I always sell a skillet or two, almost at every show. So I said, I have to take my skillet. She said, and you're not taking one other product. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Because guys, I'm old school. I have enough products to fill a six foot table. I have my tool turnabout, I sell my cutlery, I sell my salad chopper, you know, whatever. Nope, you're taking four power tools and that's it. I was literally breaking out in hives, but I said, you know what, what do I have to lose? I haven't gotten any cooking shows in my last two shows. I'm going to change it up a little. And I deliberately left everything home because if it was in my car, I know I would have panicked when I got to the show and taken everything out. So I literally went with the blender, the quick cooker, the rock rock, my 12 inch skillet, and I took my garlic press for the chicken cacciatore and my large chef tongues. That was it. So I got to the show and the hostess said to me, why are you traveling light these days, Sharon? And I said, honestly, it's a new kind of show. I wanted to surprise you. It's my power tool presentation. She's like, whatever, go for it. 
So I started with the hummus, and actually it wasn't the hummus, it was the roasted pepper walnut spread. And I started that up, and I was gonna have it as an appetizer. She had the large entertaining platter, and she brought it out. She's like, oh, look what I have, you can put it out on this. So I started that, a woman came early. Literally, as soon as she tasted it, she booked a show for September, a cooking show. And when I put it on the dishwashing cycle, she was freaking out. So as the rest of the ladies were arriving, she was like, oh my God, you have to taste this and look at this thing. And when it was done washing, I put it out on the table. And mind you, I only had very few things on my table because the 12 inch skillet was now in the oven baking the cake. And all I had were the chef tongs and the rock rock sitting there with the pasta and my little box of chicken broth next to it. So I started talking to them about the blender. And as they were arriving, I was like those women at Costco. I was just talking about this one product because that's basically all I had now on the table. And I'm talking about it, I'm talking about it, and they're all in awe and they're tasting the roasted pepper spread and they're loving it. And then I called them in so they could all watch the chicken cacciatore, which I'm gonna tell you guys. It is literally one pound of chicken tenders cut up into bite-sized pieces and three peppers, a red, a green, a yellow, and a large onion. And you just slice the peppers into thin strips and slice the onion into rings and then cut it in half. I mean, you could have brought the, um, the uh, oh my God, I was gonna say the mandolin. The, um, quick. oh my God, what am I thinking of? 10.99, simple slice. I didn't even have that. So I just used a knife, sliced it up, whatever. I had it all prepped. So when they got there, they watched me you throw in about two tablespoons of oil on sear, and we threw in the sliced peppers and the onions. I sauteed it for like three minutes. You throw in the chicken that I had seasoned with the garlic and herb rub and a jar of Rayo's marinara, not the extra large, the average size. Throw it all in, set it to custom for five minutes. I put the lid on. I brought them all back into the living room. They all had catalogs, pens. I did my strong opening thanked the host, talked about the order form, the whole bit round up. And I knew I had a very small window of time because this pasta, by the time it came to, this um, ch chicken cacciatore, by the time it came to pressure, and then five minutes, we didn't have a lot of time. So the first thing I started with was the Rock Rock collection because I wanted to get the pasta in the microwave so the two would be done together because I was gonna pour the chicken cacciatore over the pasta. Anyway, so I talked about the Rock Rock collection, got it in the microwave. It literally, you know, rang in 16 minutes. That was the end of my demonstration because the quick cooker shut off at that point as well. I brought it to the table. I showed them how it released. I dumped the entire quick cooker pot on top of the pasta. It fit perfectly in the Dutch oven. We served it up. It is so delicious. I had never tried it. I went on Jill's word, which I could have killed her or loved her at the end of the show, and I'll tell you the results. Anyway, so we served it. They were raving about it. They loved it, loved it, loved it. While they were eating it, I actually went through a little bit more. I talked about the cookware because I had had the cake pop out. She gave me a cake platter talked about the cookware. I had them open the catalog to stoneware because I didn't have any with me. They, I talked about stoneware. Little bit, literally five minutes while they were enjoying the um, chicken cacciatore. I talked about the wine bottle open, a little bit about bakeware, the business opportunity. That was it. We started at a quarter to eight. We were done at 8.30. They were done eating. I had served the dessert. They were blown away. So let me tell you what happened. Four people booked cooking shows. Three people booked virtual shows, all for September, and another cooking show for October. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, because if any of you are struggling with bookings for cooking shows, and, and even virtuals, you can certainly go live and do this. One woman shouted out, this is the best party I've ever been to. And I said, can I ask you why? Because we always hear you have the best show, you're so knowledgeable, you're funny, whatever. I said, can I ask you why you're saying that? Because this was a little bit different for me. And she actually said to me, because it was fast. No one has time. I've been to a ton of these parties. No one has time to listen to everything about what you have. She goes, you fed us. You talked about four things and we're done at 8.30 and I can go home. So I wanna tell you guys, if you're having the same issues that I was, 
change it up. I am never bringing any more products other than these four power tools. And here's the realization that I came to. I've brought the quick cooker many times, but when I have it on my table, I talk about it with the same passion that I talk about the brownie pan or the salad chopper. It's not any different because it's with everything else. Because I only had those four products, I spent time on the blender before I started. I spent time on the quick cooker, time on the rock rock, and time on the skillet. And guess what I sold last night? The sales are up to $1,600. What did they buy? They bought the skillet, the rock rock, a quick cooker, and what they couldn't buy, they booked for those power tools. So I had to share with you, because you know me, when something's working, I gotta tell my peeps. So try it. I am so excited, I have a show tomorrow night. I called up my host, I said, did you go food shopping yet? She said, I did not. I said, I'm changing the menu, and I'm going with the exact same thing, because I loved the results, but more importantly, I love the fact that I left that show with four dated cooking shows for September, the virtuals, and a cooking show for October. So any questions, guys, let me know. I will share the chicken cacciatore recipe that Jill gave me. And Jill Lerner, thank you so much for sharing the third piece of advice that you've given me in 23 years. Have a great night, guys. Bye.